Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you could see at the beginning of this video, I just bought a new piece of furniture for my balcony garden. I've been wanting to add a seating area, another seating area to my balcony garden um, because I already have a table and chairs, but I felt like my balcony was missing something, like there was not enough furniture, not enough decor. Um, so I really wanted to add some nice small bench, but I couldn't find just the right one because even though my balcony is really long, it's actually quite narrow. It's only uh, about 1.3 meters wide, so that's about 4 feet wide, which isn't a lot. And then obviously when you add the plants that are already on the floor, that doesn't really leave enough room, uh, you know, to move easily and to do stuff on the balcony. So I really wanted the, the bench to be small. Uh, and I finally found one. I found it on Amazon and it's only uh, one meter long uh, and 60 centimeters wide. So that's three feet by two feet. Um, so I'm really happy with this purchase. I just have to move stuff right now and clean up some stuff um, just to arrange it nicely all around this new bench. I also want to paint it because um, I don't want it to be so bright, such a natural wood color that doesn't fit with anything that I have on the balcony. Uh, I will paint it in a grayish color to match my table and chairs. Um, so yeah, so today's video is gonna be uh, a bit of a vlog because that's basically what I'm up to on the balcony this week. Uh, so first I'm gonna paint the bench and then I'm gonna tackle some other issues and maintenance. So let's go. So if you remember, there used to be my galvanized buckets area. I still would like to keep some of the buckets. I mean, I'm thinking about putting maybe um, three buckets in here. I will obviously move the bench. Some three buckets here and three buckets on the other side. They are currently there. And this will be gone, obviously. These are my biennial seedlings. Uh, they will soon be planted into their final pots. So I will have more space here because right now there is not a lot of space to walk. Um, so yeah, the goal for today is to clean this huge mess um, and to paint this bench and then we have some pest issues and other stuff to address as well. Okay you guys, so this is how the bench looks after two coats of paint. The underside still needs another coat, but while it's drying I'm gonna tackle this area because it is a hot mess. I often get asked what you do with plants that are out of season or out of bloom. Uh, so some of them I place them here. It's usually not that messy. I just have to had to move some pots to fit this bench in here. So now that the bench is here I need to rearrange the space so I will move the bench place some pots on this side on this side but before I do it I have to clean up this area a bit Okay, so I'm done with this area. Doesn't it look so much better, so much cleaner? So not much here to see. As I said, I mostly store here some propagation, some baby plants and stuff like that. A, a few fruit bushes. Uh, but I try to rearrange this so that I can still access this area uh, and that it doesn't look messy. Uh, these galvanized buckets will be moved a little bit closer to the bench so there will be space, it won't be um, just all here in this corner. Uh, so yeah, have some empty pots where I can plant spring bulbs later on. Now I just really quickly have to repot my ivy topiary because I don't know if you guys noticed but the pot is completely broken so um, we have a crazy winds here and obviously um, having a balcony garden on the seventh floor doesn't help. 
Um, so every now and then some plants they fall in the wind, uh, wind knocks them down and unfortunately with terracotta pots they often break. Okay, you guys, my camera stopped recording. Uh, so what I was saying is that I found the exact same pot that this plant was planted in before. So the size is the same. Uh, it is a bit small. It probably could benefit from slightly larger container, but I don't have any larger container available at the moment. So this is just a temporary solution. I will repot it again in the spring. But I just released the compaction, cut away just that bottom part that was really like um, tangled uh, and repotted it into a fresh soil, watered it. So it should be good until next year. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about maintenance. I have a very unusual pest problem on my balcony. I have a lot of stink bugs or shield bugs. I'm sure you know what they are. Um, and there are different types of stink bugs. There are green ones, which are considered harmless. I mean, they are sap sucking insects, so they sap the suck, sap out of your plants, but the green ones don't do any significant damage. But I also found a lot of eggs and juveniles of the brown marmorated stink bug, and this is considered a true garden pest. Um, and they feed on a lot of different ornamental plants, but they are usually attracted by fruit bushes. And I found a lot of them, a lot of adults on my alpine strawberries. And whenever I have a pest in my garden, if there are small amounts of pests, I tolerate them. Because garden, a healthy garden should have both beneficial creatures and pests. You can't remove all the pests because they are part of the food chain. They need to be here to feed those beneficial creatures. You can't have a sterile garden. It doesn't exist. Um, there's a beautiful uh, proverb saying if something is not eating your plants then your garden is not part of the ecosystem and that's so true because you always need to have some pests in your garden and I have a lot of pests in my garden all kinds of pests and I don't do anything about them and as you can see my garden is doing perfectly fine but if things get out of control um, my first approach is cultural or physical control methods so hand picking the bigger bugs or uh, spraying them with a jet of water just to wash them away, you know, wash them off the plants, uh, or setting some traps, some natural traps to attract them, to bait them, and then to capture them. Uh, and this is usually really, really effective. You can get rid of a lot of bugs this way. That's what I usually do. And eventually, if things really get out of control and there's really a serious issue, which there usually isn't, or if there's a specific bug, like for example, vine weevil grubs, I have vine weevil grubs every year, then I reach for biological control methods. This basically means that you use a natural predator and a lot of pests have their natural predators. So if you educate yourself a little bit about the pests that you are dealing with and what are their natural predators, you can use that natural predator to get rid of that pest, to control the population of that pest. That's what I do, for example, with vine weevil grubs. I do have a video about that. Um, you use parasitic nematodes uh, to get rid of those vine weevil grubs. For different pests you can use nematodes, you can use some parasitic insects, you can use predatory larvae, and this usually does the job just right. Uh, and these are natural methods, these won't harm beneficial creatures, they won't harm ecosystem. The pests can develop resistance to it, because for example with pesticides, if you use pesticides repeatedly, the pests develop resistance to the pesticide, so the pesticide become inefficient um, with time. Uh, and obviously pesticides are non-selective, so they kill both the pest and the beneficial creatures. So I never ever use pesticides. I've been growing, I've been growing plants on this balcony for over eight years, had all kinds of pests that you can imagine, never even once used pesticide. And as you can see, so far so good. Always cultural methods and biological control methods. So that being said, I have stink bugs on my balcony. So what I need to do right now, I need to go to check pretty much every single plant in my garden. I will check the leaves, I will turn the leaves because they lay eggs underneath the leaf. So I need to check if I find more eggs and more juveniles. And what is strange is that they reproduce now. It's quite late, it's already September. Uh, they usually have like one 
population or two populations during the year but because it is so abnormally hot it's 36 degrees celsius right now uh, which is super unusual it's september it should be cold it should start to be more autumnal but it's super super hot so i think that's also bugs those bugs and they reproduce now at this time of year um, so for mature stink bugs it's best to hand pick them and uh, for the larva or for the eggs whenever you see them because they lay eggs underneath the leaf so just pull that leaf off get rid of the leaf and this should um, be enough to control the population of stink bugs if you happen to have them on your balcony like me you can also see the damage from uh, vine weevils they like to eat just the the sides of the leaves they like eat the irregular they make irregular like notches on the leaf margins Look how many berries I still have, both yellow alpine strawberries and red. No wonder those bags are attracted. <laughs> oh, lots of yumminess on these bushes. Okay guys, so I'm proud to tell you that I found no eggs, no juveniles, only one mature uh, stink bug. Uh, but I've been doing this for a while now. Every day since about a week I come out here, I check for juvenile, I check for eggs, I pick off adult beetles and as you can see it works because I only found one and no more eggs or juveniles. So that's great because there was really a lot of them at some point. Uh, like if I see the concentration of juveniles, because they usually like concentrate, they, they're in a group uh, on one part of the plant so I just pick off the, the entire part and throw it away. Uh, so that's what I've been doing and as you can see it worked because there is no more brown marmorated stink bugs in my garden Only one adult that I'm gonna get rid of right now uh, So generally I wasn't planning on sharing that with you because I Imagine that not a lot of people struggle with stink bugs in your garden, especially balcony garden But if you do hope that you found some of those tips helpful Okay, so now all I have to do is to water everything um, because it's super hot. We have another heat wave. It's been 36 degrees Celsius for the entire week again. I am so looking forward to fall. I would love some cooler temperatures to finally arrive, but it's still really, really hot. I cannot do anything. I cannot plant any fall plants. I cannot plant bulbs. So I'm a little bit stuck, you know, still holding on to the end of summer and to those crispy plants because so many plants died this year so many plants got sun scorched uh, it's just sad to look at because these planters for example the railing planters they looked really cute but now there's just like a lot of dead plants in them but i still have to like wait until the temperatures cool down a bit so that i can plant some fall stuff so i'm really really looking forward to it and hopefully i can share that with you in the upcoming videos so for now, I'm going to be watering. I uh, hope that you enjoyed today's video. I know it was a bit random, kind of vlog, kind of about everything and nothing. Uh, but hope you liked it anyway. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you again next week. Hopefully with some fall content. Bye.